Hello and welcome to a new video on the Crypto2 YouTube channel in the Basics of Cryptology series. In this video I want to give you a short introduction into rainbow tables. Before you watch this video you should have a look at the videos about hash functions and about passwords. To understand this video here you need to understand how hash functions work and you need to understand how passwords are stored, for instance, in a database. I structured this video into different parts. The first part, I want to give you the foundations of rainbow tables. Then I want to show you how you can create a rainbow table. And finally, I want to show you how you can search in rainbow tables. When you watch the other videos in this series, you probably know this slide here. And in this video, we will deal with cryptology, cryptography, and modern cryptography. Let's come to the foundations of rainbow tables. The purpose of rainbow tables is to improve the speed of finding a pre-image of cryptographic hash value, for instance, passwords. And rainbow table searches are much faster than brute force searches. Rainbow tables are only suitable for hash functions where no salt was used to create these. If you don't know what a salt is, you should have a look at my passwords video. And rainbow tables need a huge amount of memory, but they are a very powerful attack tool. Because time is substituted by memory, and this is called a time memory trade-off. And rainbow tables are pre-computed tables or data structures for caching the outputs and of course the inputs, which are our pre-images or our passwords of hash functions. And there already exists pre-generated rainbow tables for some hash functions, for instance, for the LAN manager, for MD5, for SHA1 and others. And rainbow tables were invented by Philip Oxley in 2003. Which are the construction blocks of rainbow tables? There are two main construction blocks. First, we have our hash function h, and then we have the reduction function or reduction functions r. And h is the hash function for which we want to create the rainbow table. And r maps from the hash value space to the pre-image space. Now let's assume we want to attack a 10 character password consisting of lowercase letters, uppercase letters and digits. And in sum, we have a total of 62 different characters. First of all, let's have a look what is pre-image space. All our pre-images are constructed like this here. We have a P0, a P1, a P2 and a P9. So we have a 10 character password. These are the characters. And each character can either be from A to Z lowercase, from A to Z uppercase, or from zero to nine, the digits. And then our hash value space. All hash values are values of the hash function of our pre-image. And of course, a hash value then is a string of bits like this here. We have bit zero, bit one, bit two, and so on, and so on, and so on, bit n, where each bit, of course, is either 0 or 1. And the n here is a bit width of the hash function. And here is an example. We have the password password123, which is German for password, and 123. And this is mapped, for instance, to the hash value 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and so on, and so on, and so on, 1, 0. So this here comes from our pre-image space, and this here is our hash value space. Let's speak about how to create rainbow tables and what are rainbow tables. Rainbow tables are multiple chains of hash and reduction values. And I have here a simplified rainbow table with three reduction functions. And the rainbow table is constructed like this. You have some random or non-random start values out of our pre-image space. For instance, we have here Wikipedia. By the way, this here comes from Wikipedia, this image. I thought it's really nice, so I wanted to use it in the video. So you use different start values here, and then you compute the hash function on the pre-image here, and you get a hash value. And then you use the reduction function to map from the hash space back to the pre-image space. Then you get another word or another pre-image from the pre-image space, and you apply again the hash value. You get another hash value in the hash value space. You then apply again the reduction function, and this here is another reduction function, so we have here R1, R2, and then you reduce from the hash space, the hash value space, to the pre-image space. We get another word here, for instance, Jimbo, and then again we apply the hash function. 
we get another hash value from the hash value space. We reduce again with a different reduction function and we get our final pre-image value here. And this is the last value that we have in our rainbow table. So we have a starting value, a long chain and an end value. And then we have a lot of different chains. And this table here can be hundreds and hundreds of megabytes or even gigabytes. And these are all pre-computed. And the idea is that we can use this later on to search for a pre-image of a hash function. How this works, I will show you in a few minutes. So instead of storing all hash and pre-image chains that I just show you, we only store the beginnings and the endings of the rainbow tables. This decreases the needed size to store the rainbow tables and we can even store bigger rainbow tables because we only store the beginning and the end of the chain. And for each chain, of course, as I already have shown you, different start values are used. And in each step, a different reduction function ri is used. And this can be done, for instance, by adding an additional parameter to the reduction function, which is based on the iteration. So just the iteration number is used. So we have R1 for iteration 1, R2 for iteration 2, and R100 million something for the iteration 100 million and something. And the part rainbow in the name of the rainbow table comes from the usage of different reduction functions. When I go back to the slide here, you see that in Wikipedia they even use different colors. So this here looks like a rainbow. Now, let's search for a pre-image in the rainbow table. So we assume that we already created the rainbow table for a hash function and we want to attack, for instance, a password. So we have a hash value h of a password and we want to find the pre-image p where the hash of the pre-image p equals to the hash value that we just obtained here and that we want to attack. In the first main part, we walk forward in the rainbow table. So we reduce the current hash value h dash using the reduction function r. So we compute a new pre-image p dash equals to the reduction function h dash. And then we compute a new hash value h dash, here the dash is missing, using the hash function. So h dash equals the hash function of our p dash. And of course, we do this again and again and again, as if we would create the rainbow table. And of course, in the beginning, the first h dash here is our h that we yeah, obtained. And we search in the end of the column of our stored hashes of the rainbow table for the hash value h. And if we don't find the hash value, we go to step one. So we continue doing this hash reduction, hash reduction, hash reduction until we find the hash value. And when we find the hash value, we go to main step two. And the main step two here is to search the original pre-image. And this means we go to the beginning of the rainbow table row where we found our current h and walk forward until we find the original h of p equals to h. And the p is our pre-image or password. Now let's assume as an example, we search for the pre-image of the hash KOLSCX. And we reduce this here using our reduction function. And then we get a value. For instance, we get Zurich. We search for Zurich in our endings of our rainbow tables. We only have stored the yellow values, so we don't have stored the Zurich here. We go step by step through these values here and we don't find Zurich. But we know here, of course, we have Zurich in our rainbow table, but in our search, we don't know this yet. So we hash Zurich again with the hash function and then we get 8NTPY. And then again, we reduce this using our reduction function and we get as a value, my name. And we search again in the end values of the rainbow table. In the first entry, we do not find it, but in the second entry here, we find my name. So we know that our pre-image of KOLSCX has to be in this row here. So we go to the step, second main part of the search in the rainbow table. We take the beginning of the rainbow table and we go forward here. 
So we hash a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, we get this, this hash value here. Then we reduce it to Bernie. And then we hash again Bernie and get k, o, l, s, c, x. And of course, in each hash step, when we go forward here, we compare it with the original that we have here. And since we have k, o, l, s, c, x, and we have k, o, l, s, c, x here, we know that the pre-image of k, o, l, s, c, x is Bernie. So again, to search in the rainbow table, you start with reducing and hashing and reducing and hashing your value here until you find in one entry in the last part of our stored rainbow table, this entry. And then you go in this row to the first column back and then you go from this forward until you find the hash value that you are searching for and you know the pre-image before this value here, in this case, the pre-image of KOLSCX is Bernie. So in the other videos of the Basics of Cryptology series, I would now go to Crypto2 and show you the implementations in Crypto2. But rainbow tables are not yet implemented in Crypto2. But if you are interested in developing these, for instance, in a bachelor thesis or in a master thesis, just contact us. Then you could write or do your bachelor or master thesis with Crypto2. And this was everything I wanted to show you in this short video. I hope you liked it. If yes, give a thumbs up. If no, you know what to do. Give a thumbs down. And if you did not yet subscribe to our channel, I would be really happy if you do so. This really helps us and it's not very difficult. So just click subscribe and see you in the next video.